Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. My name is Sergey, and I was born in the USSR. If you're interested in the Soviet Union, I highly recommend a channel called Ushanka Show, which is a YouTube show about a guy who lived in the Soviet Union and then moved to America. Uh, he talks about life, what life was like under the Soviet Union, and it's very fascinating. So... So today we're going to talk about forced child labor in the Soviet Union. But before we dive in into this topic, we need to take a look at one very interesting KGB document dated back to 1983. This document was discovered by Ukrainian historian Eduard Andryushenko. I'll post a link to his Facebook page below this video. The title of the document is About Children's Poisoning. Zaporozhye region. On June 21st, 1983, 51 students, 7th to 9th grade, from the schools number 37, 50, and 74 from the city of Zaporozhye were hospitalized with the signs of poisoning, symptoms of poisoning. And then there is a side mark that they were harvesting carrots in Sovhoz, Kamintern, Zaporozhye region, total of 176 children. So almost a third of them got sick and got into the hospital. 11 children were placed into the ER. So they were in a pretty bad shape, reanimatsia, I call it in Russian. The health condition of the rest is satisfactory. Remaining children were removed from the field work and placed in a camp and being supervised by medical personnel. Supposedly, children got poisoned by the fumes of chemicals chlorophos and fazalon that the field next to the carrot field was treated on June 16, so five days prior. Situation at the incident site as well as the place of living of the sick children is normal and being controlled by the local KGB. So as you see, there is a lot of information here to swallow and to digest. So how are we gonna eat this Soviet bear? You got that right, one bite at the time. Such documents that were secret and classified for so many years, a great reminder to all the people that we call Sovkadrochery People that lived in the Soviet Union and thought it was so amazing and so great and they wanted to return it as soon as possible. So let's dig in. So this document is from Zaporozhye region, which is southern east part of Ukraine. It's a huge industrial area as well as a big agricultural area. The date is June 21st, 1983. So I was almost 12. And this is during the rule of Yuri Andropov. So Brezhnev passed away a year ago. And once again, it's a June 21st. So first thing I checked, and with Google, it's so easy. I'm constantly being impressed. That June 21st of 1983 fell on Tuesday. So I thought, well, it's not too bad. That means that kids just skipped school in order to go and pick carrots. But then I was like... Wait a minute, it's June! In Soviet Union, summer break, Letnia Kanikuli, started on June 1st and ended on August 31st. Which means, if these kids were taken to the fields on June 21st, that means they already had, they were on a summer break and they were forced to go back to school, hop on the buses, and go pick carrots. In my understanding, this is like a crime. If I rule the world and everything in it, I'll find the biggest carrot on that field and I'll jam you know where to the guy who come up with the idea to take kids off their summer break and force them to work picking carrots. Okay, moving along. So next, when they're talking about that supposedly children got poisoned by the f chemical fumes, chlorophos and fazalon, and I looked it up, this is like some hardcore 
stuff that kills uh, bugs and worms like they use uh, fazalon on animals because you know flies put eggs in their animal skin so they treat cows with that chemical and then it says for two weeks you can't butcher this cow because the whole meat is poison so first of all this is a direct proof for people who claim that during the soviet union we didn't use any harming chemicals treating fruits and vegetables that everything was natural in fact we use some hardcore chemicals especially in the cotton industry and secondly i don't think you can get poisoned so bad by the fumes if the field was treated five days prior and it was a neighboring field i think what happened and it's just my guess it's june so probably a field next to the kids was strawberries or maybe peas so something the kids wanted to snack on so some kids were snacking on strawberries unwashed strawberries and they got poisoned that kind of makes more sense to me personal than uh, five day old uh, treatment fumes and then think about it government forces kids and they're talking about seven to ninth grade so it's 14 years old 15 years old 16 year olds go out in the fields and pick carrots by hand and it's not like middle of nowhere somewhere in siberia or far east this is the industrial heartland of the soviet union zaporozhye region factories up on the factories i mean steel making car making anything and here we got children forced to pick carrots by hand let me put it into perspective this is 1983 the Soviets launched the very first satellite into space, Sputnik. Hey, hey, Sputnikov, 26 years prior, and we pick still carrots by hand. In 1961, 22 years prior events of 1983, Soviets sent a very first human into space, Yuri Gagarin. But we still pick carrots by hand and potatoes by hand and cabbage by hand and many other crops and then of course as a cherry on the top or in this case as a big fat carrot on the top the situation at the incident as well as the apartments where the families of the sick kids the situation is normal and being controlled by kgb as you may know by now i also participated quite a bit in such collective farm Audience, even I grew up, was born and grew up in Kiev, Ukraine. Um, with school, I went many times uh, harvesting beets, cabbages, tomatoes, you name it. And of course, I planted so many potatoes with my grandparents and parents, and I harvested so many potatoes as well. It's pretty much was every year tradition. You go help to plant potatoes then in the fall you come back and you help to harvest potatoes everything of course was done by hand kind of similar situation happened with the military personnel soldiers were sent to collective farms to help to harvest potatoes carrots and whatever other uh, manual labor so you go to be trained to be a soldier but then you end up in the fields working hard manual labor and i posted before on youtube um, in the community post pictures from these uh, harvest times and a lot of people thought it was a great idea i have mixed feelings about it because it was forced like we couldn't not to go like i don't remember what would be the punishment i think they will call your parents uh, they'll give you bad grade but like you were required to go and work for free i mean Think about it, a child forced labor, not being paid, and you had no choice but to go. I mean, where is the line between slavery and between, oh, we're just going to have fun as kids and they need to learn new skills? And not only children and military personnel, they also send scientists for like these research institutes, like Naučne Stetsky Institute, like my mother worked there. In the fall, they also were sent like on Sundays to help harvest crops. You know, using scientists on this type of project is like using the microscope to 
drive nails into the board. I mean, you still can do the job, but it, this is so ineffective. And one time I stumbled upon on YouTube uh, commercials, like videos showing equipment from a company called Spudnik, S-P-U-D-N-I-K, like Sputnik, but it's Spudnik, like potato spud. And I almost cried. These machines, they harvest in one minute what I probably harvested in two days by hand. So effective, so quick. It was it was sad because I, I was just like, oh my goodness, why we didn't have that equipment? Why we didn't develop anything like that? Probably because we had free labor. Well, comrades, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new. I want to thank again everyone who supports me on patreon.com. Thank you so much. It's great support. And we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Be careful, put on like a don't dump it. That's fine. Now I gotta just go through the dirt. Hey, by the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you! And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet